Okay, so let's look at proxy re-encryption or transformation encryption. And what we'll find is a way for Alice to pass to Bob uh, a secret or a cipher or a, a protected encryption key. Right. Okay, so let's look at proxy encryption or transform encryption. Okay, and we'll try and understand what these concepts actually are. But basically what happens is that uh, we have Alice and we have Bob. So what we normally do is that, let's say that Alice wants to encrypt a file, she will create a symmetric key. Then we can encrypt that key with Alice's public key. So if we have a public key here, and we also have a private key. So this is the private key, and this is the public key. So to be able to protect the key that she's going to use to encrypt a file, we encrypt with the public key. And then to be able to decrypt, we then decrypt with Alice's private key to reveal the symmetric key that will encrypt a file. But let's say that we now want to give this encrypted key to Bob, but we don't actually want to decrypt the key. We want to translate the private key from Alice to a private key of Bob. So over here we'll have Bob's private key and Bob's public key. And what we want to do is to be able to trans, trans, transform our key over and then for that key to be protected with the key, well, it will be decrypted by Bob's pub private key. So for this, what we do is that we have what's called a transform encryption. It will take the encrypted uh, key and then take the private key and Bob's public key. That will transform. So now the encryption key has been handed over so that Bob can actually decrypt it. Okay, so let's go through that step by step. Okay, so Bob has public and a public and a private key and the same as as Alice. Public and a private key. So what we would do is that we would generate a key. So this is our key here. Okay, we would take our message there, apply the key to the message, and then we end up with a cipher message. Okay, so this is the this is the key that is going to be protected. So for that, what we would do normally is that we would take Alice's public key and encrypt that key. And then the only key that can then decrypt that is Alice's private key. So if we apply the private key, we reveal the key and she can decrypt the message encrypted cipher to reveal the message. Okay, so what we'd normally do is this, apply Alice's public key. 
But what we want to do is to translate that with Bob's public key so that the key that's used to decrypt the key oops uh, will be Bob's private key. Let me check. Will be Bob's private key if we can assume this is private key here. So once we have Bob's private key, we can reveal the key and decrypt uh, the cipher. Okay, so in this way, we can actually uh, de decrypt our, we can pass the encryption from Alice to Bob. And we do this with the proxy encryption. Okay, so this is the, the normal way that we would uh, protect our encryption key. So let's say that Alice has a, a secret key, a symmetric key, AES key, uh, and she'll use that to encrypt a file. She then creates the encrypted file. And then on the other side, she'll use the same key to be able to decrypt the file, this one here. But unfortunately, we don't really want Alice to be able to store uh, the secret key because someone could discover it. So the way that we do this is that we often create a key pair, a public key and a private key. And the public key is used to encrypt the secret key to produce an encrypted uh, key. This could be uh, a message uh, that we would want to cipher but normally it would be something like an encryption key. To decrypt, we can then use uh, Alice's private key to recover the original key and then to be able to decrypt the, the document. Okay, so that's how we use public key encryption to protect a symmetric key or Alice's secret key. So here's the code that could uh, create this and we're we're using these, the Iron Core Labs uh, library and node.js. So in this case, what we do is we create a key pair, this key pair here. We also create a signing uh, key pair. So that will be the uh, Alice's key that will sign all of her keys or all of the encryptions that she will have. So that could be a long-term key pair that she uses to be able to sign off on all of our transactions. We'll create a buffer and then we'll, we'll put a message in there. In this case, it's not a key, but we'll just use a, a, a message to encrypt. So it's a message that we're encrypting here rather than the key. But it's the same process that we'd go through and it's probably easier because it's got less bytes to, to create a key for most cases. Okay, so then we encrypt using the plain text, of course. We use uh, Alice's uh, public key uh, to be able to encrypt. So this is this process here. And then she'll sign off with our private key. That's how we sign uh, for things. We use our private key and we can show with our public key uh, the, the, the proof of uh, identity. Okay, then we can then decrypt and we decrypt with Alice's private key here. Okay, and this should recover back the original thing. Uh, in this case, it will be a plain text message that we'll send. So let's see in this in operation. Okay, so we'll just feed in a message, we'll encrypt and then decrypt in there. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at the replic code if we want to see how it's running. It's running node 12. Point. One six, and there's the code running in there. Okay, so the, the code itself uh, is running as a node.js program. So now let's look at transformation encryption or proxy re encryption. So for this, what we want to be able to do is to move the key from Alice, the protected key, from Alice to Bob, so that Bob's private key 
can now decrypt the key that we create and not uh, Alice's key. So we do the same thing as we did before. We encrypt uh, the key or the secret into this encryption, encrypted version using Alice's public key. Then to decrypt it, uh, Trent takes Alice's private key and also Bob's public key to create what's called the transformation key. With the transformation key and Bob's private key and obviously the input of the encrypted key, we, Bob will be able to decrypt the, the key. So in this way, we've handed over a secret here to Bob and we've transformed the, 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 the key. So this is the code here, and we'll just run this one again. So again, there's not much to see here, but under the hood that's running, there's a ciphertext. Uh, we'll have a look at the, uh, the code running here to be able to see what's going on. Okay, so we Alice generates our key pair. That's fine, and our signing key. She will then uh, encrypt, in this case it's a message, with her private key, with her private, with her public key, sorry, and sign it off with her private key, signing key. Bob will generate his key pair, as we saw before, and then we'll create the transformation using Alice's private key and Bob's public key. And again, Alice will sign off that, that she has uh, approved this transaction. Then we will take the cipher text and uh, create our uh, transformation key and which Bob will receive this here. And this will be the encrypted uh, value that he gets and he decrypts that with his private key. And we can convert that back into uh, its original form. So we'll just give this a little run just to see it's running okay. And we'll just go for a message of hello. And we'll see if it's running. And there it's running there. Okay. So in this way, we've moved the uh, the, the protected uh, key, in this case, the protected message that would have been decrypted with Alice's private key to Bob now, who can now decrypt it with his, his private key. Okay, we can do the same again with, with Rust. So this is our code in Rust. Uh, just let's see if it's working. Okay, so we'll just get it, try it out. And we've got an input message and a decrypted, so it's working fine. So we'll just have a quick look to see how the code is running. So in this example, I've used an initial and target. So initial is Alice and the target is Bob. So we can see initially that we will create our key pair here for Alice. And we will then encrypt with Alice's pu public key here. We'll create the key pair for Bob as the target. We then create the transformation key with Alice's private key and Bob's public key and that will create the value that's going to be transformed from and given to uh, Bob. This will be by Trent. And then finally, uh, Bob will decrypt it with his private key and everything should be good. Okay, so we'll just create this message here and we'll just make sure it runs. This time we're running pure Rust uh, to, and, and Rust should run faster than and then node.js because it produces native code. And we can see it's worked. I've also printed out the some of the keys that are actually used here. Okay, so in this way, we can actually transform our encryption, move the, the key, the key, the protection of the key from Alice to, to Bob using this trusted proxy. In this case, it's Trent. Okay, so that's been an introduction to proxy re-encryption or transformation encryption. Thank you.